My name is Christy Call, Editorial Director of Cure Magazine. In this edition of the Speaking Out video series, on behalf of the National Pancreas Foundation, we're talking with Dr. David Whitcomb from the University of Pittsburgh Department of Medicine about the basics of pancreatic cancer. Hi, and welcome. Hi, great to be with you. Thank you. So to start, what, can you explain what the pancreas is and what it normally does in the body? This is a great question. I've dedicated my life to studying the pancreas. And the easiest way to explain it is to think about something we all understand. This is a lemon. And I'm going to bite into this lemon and one of the digestive organs in my body will work on it. What happens is that the acid and the juices, when they're in my mouth, stimulate the salivary glands to squirt juices into my mouth. And there's two types. The first one is bicarbonate, which neutralizes the citric acid, so the acid goes away. The second thing is there are sugars, and an enzyme, which is a biological scissor, cuts the complex sugars down into simple sugars. And so suddenly the juices from the lemon go from being so sour to being sweet and no acid anymore. Your pancreas is just like that. It sits right behind the stomach. And so when the stomach is filled with food, it changes the food by putting acid in it. And then when the acid goes into the small intestine, the pancreas squirts juices that are the same kind that come from your salivary glands, the bicarbonate and enzymes, and it breaks the food down into simple molecules that your intestine can absorb and it can go through your body. The biggest difference between the salivary glands and the stomach and the, and the pancreas is that the pancreas makes digestive enzymes that eat proteins. And so it can shred complex proteins into simple amino acids. But if those become active inside the pancreas, it's very bad because the word pancreas means all meat and it, it literally digests itself. And so instead of digesting a meal, one of the problems we see is digestion of the pancreas, which is the first of three major uh, problems that physicians deal with when they deal with the pancreas. Okay, so what are some of the common diseases of the pancreas? So the first one I mentioned is when there's a sudden digestion of the pancreas, it's called acute pancreatitis, and individuals will have sudden severe abdominal pain and often vomiting, and it doesn't go away with, with uh, anything at home. You go to the hospital, they find out your pancreas is inflamed, and it usually takes two or three days for that to settle down. In some cases, it goes bizarre and, and throughout the entire body. And in those cases, uh, the person can be very sick and end up in the intensive care unit. The second major problem is chronic pancreatitis. It's where the pancreas has been changed to a scar. And the inflammation of the pancreas is a terrible problem because it leads to a number of additional problems. Uh, the additional problem from chronic pancreatitis is that uh, it can lead to both diabetes and also to pancreatic cancer. The pancreas not only makes enzymes to break sugar, uh, complex sugar down into simple ones, but it releases insulin to signal the cells of the body to take the sugar out of the bloodstream and into the cells for energy. And so those cells, if they're damaged, mean that you can't get the signal and you have to inject the insulin into your body in order to replace that function of the pancreas. So acute and chronic pancreatitis, diabetes, and cancer are the three big problems that physicians worry about. Okay, so we're going to focus on pancreatic cancer. Um, is there more than one type of pancreatic cancer that exists? Yeah, that's uh, very interesting. Um, there are uh, basically uh, relatively benign uh, types of tumors, more common in women than men. 
Uh, there's also endocrine tumors. So we talked about the cells that make insulin. Every once in a while, they'll turn into a type of cancer that is slow growing. And that's what Steve Jobs had is a neuroendocrine type of cancer. And then the third type is called uh, a duct cell, which is one of the types of cells. It's uh, called adenocarcinoma. And that is the most common and the most feared type because that can lead to very uh, rapid metastases and even death. Okay. So with that, actually, so why is early detection of pancreatic cancer so important? So this is uh, a really important question. Uh, the National Cancer Institutes has designated the uh, adenocarcinoma of the pancreas a recalcitrant cancer. And that means once it's spread, it's just resistant to therapy, even the most uh, advanced and hard to tolerate therapies. And even with that, uh, only uh, about 10% uh, of people survive five years. There's only a few other cancers that are so bad as this. However, if it's uh, detected early and removed, then the, the uh, outcome can be extremely well and people will live uh, 10 or 20 years. And so that is a, an important distinction is how can you identify and remove a cancer before it's severe. Okay, and so with that, what are some of the current challenges, however, in early detection of pancreatic cancer? Well, the pancreas is an interesting organ. Uh, your salivary glands, you can actually feel if you're trained, uh, but the pancreas lays behind the stomach across the backbone. So physicians can't actually feel it either from the front or the back or the sides. And the early symptoms are often uh, just like you feel uncomfortable, a little bit of abdominal pain. And so it doesn't have distinct signs and symptoms and you can't feel it on physical exam. And so many times it is very hard to detect. So that is really a challenge. It's not like a prostate or breast exam, others that, that doctors use, skin exams. So that makes it a, a, a challenge. It's just a, located in an obscure location that's hard to, hard to reach. Okay. And how are we working on the challenges? So the challenges is that if you recognize that the cancer can grow pretty quickly um, and that people live a long period of time, you can't do advanced testing on everybody every few months because it's just physically impossible. And so what we try to do is identify people who have a very high likelihood of getting cancer or have early signs and symptoms that something is going wrong and those individuals then undergo screening to see whether or not they actually have a, a pancreatic cancer or something else. So trying to identify it early based on the earliest signs and symptoms is extremely important. And if we can identify it, then we've got a way to treat it if it's caught early. Okay, yeah. And so how can we raise more awareness for individuals so that they can start to better understand pancreatic cancer? So I think the awareness um, is uh, largely in primary care doctors and in, in uh, individual people who, uh, are becoming more aware that to live a healthy life, they actually have to pay attention to their diet, their lifestyle, and those types of things. Um, I think that having a family history is probably uh, a rude awakening to many people. They understand how bad this is and uh, wanna try to uh, do what they can to prevent it. And that's the number one thing to do. There's very simple things um, that we've studied. Uh, for example, uh, cigarette smoking is one of the worst things. And we've had large families we've studied that have inflammation of the pancreas from early age of life. And the risk of cancer was very high. 40% of people got pancreatic cancer by age 70. But we noticed that the age of onset of cancer and the 
uh, likelihood of getting cancer was markedly increased in those who smoked versus those that didn't smoke. So we told the family 20 years ago, don't smoke. And they stopped and cancer just plummeted in the family. So now it's down to less than 7% and we think it's gonna get even better. So that's probably the most important thing. A healthy lifestyle, no smoking, uh, fruits and vegetables, especially things like uh, broccoli and those types of things are best way to prevent it. The early signs and symptoms are a little bit more subtle so they can be hard to catch. Most important ones, unintended weight loss. If you're starting to lose weight, uh, you wanna check with your doctor. The second one is abnormal blood sugar. If your blood sugars start getting abnormal and there's no other explanation for it, then that's another sign. The third one is the skin color. If you start to turn a little bit yellow, especially looking at the whites of your eyes, that's another sign that it may be uh, pancreatic cancer. So those are the kinds of things that are important for early detection, but more importantly, prevention. Great, well, thank you so much. You're welcome, and I hope we can really do some good by raising awareness of the importance of pancreatic cancer and how to prevent it and make sure that it can be treated early. Thanks.